Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. There is no much to add what Raoul said. Oh, sorry. We have pretty much the same uh, presentation. Uh, I just want to tell you, uh, give you a little overview, uh, wanted to give you a little overview about the use of ICG in the um, esophageal surgery, as Raoul already did. Um, especially Ivor Lewis is a vectomy. Maybe I could add, uh, Ivor Lewis has been a, a British surgeon and uh, he already developed and um, published this technique in 1946 in an open technique. And uh, of course, today it's uh, um, also proceeded laparoscopically and in uh, robotic. Um, it's everything already said by Raul, and I wanted to show you, stop this video. Unfortunately, it's not working. It's, it's in a laparoscopic setting. The gastric tube is already performed, and we give the ICG. And you can see the uh, ICG in the greater curvature vessels and uh, also in the uh, tissue of the gastric wall. Next one in an open setting, the same built gastric tube, also giving the ICG, and you see the vessels are shining very well. And the idea behind that is to identify the uh, um, the border between the good and bad perfused area to uh, put the anastomosis in the best perfused area. Show you another video. It's an old video, but uh, still impressive. We um, gave the ICG 7.5 mils, and you realize the ICG in the greater uh, curvature vessels and also in the gastric wall, and suddenly it stops. And in the tip of the gastric tube, there's no um, enhancement. And if you switch to the white light, there's no difference. And I find it every time very impressive. Uh, how do I know without ICG, with, only with the white light, where to put the anastomosis? And all you have to do then is to uh, mark this border and to make the anastomosis in the better perfused area. Maybe some words um, how the dose should be, and personally, I think we don't. We only need a low dose, um, uh, two mils, three mils, five mils, not more. That gives you the opportunity to repeat, repeat it later on uh, to another point of the operation. If you look into the literature, you find a lot of different um, different recommendations, and that's why. Uh, our International Society uh, of Fluorescence Guided Surgery that Raoul already mentioned um, uh, are busy preparing uh, recommendations for dosing and timing. It's not avail uh, available right now, but it will coming soon. Okay, the data you already got from Raoul. I go further. And I show you this um, review from the Netherlands that also showed the clear advantage for the use of ICG in, in, um, concerning the leakage rate. Uh, but I show you this uh, for another reason. It's almost like Anna Dupree made a very, very nice um, presentation for the uh, quantitative analysis. And um, for perfusion control is always a problem. You can s say it's perfusion or no perfusion, but it's very difficult to interpret, and it's often very subjective to say how good it is. And uh, in the past, there are um, some very, very few, but there are some articles that try to um, make a quantitative analysis. There's one from Kumagai et al. Uh, with the 90-second rule, and this 90-second rule means that um, uh, if the tissue is not perfused in between 90 seconds, the uh, colleagues change the strategy and put their anastomosis in a 
in another uh, region of better perfusion that makes a uh, leakage rate from only 1.4%. Uh, the other good idea is to compare the um, um, ICG flow speed between greater curvature vessels and the gastric wall. And uh, whenever they had a delay between the, the vessels and, and the wall tissue, they had an increased um, risk for uh, leakages, like you can see, uh, close to 50%. Another uh, study comes from the Netherlands, and this study assessed the time to fluorescent en enhancement and analyzed um, if there's a difference between patients with and without um, anastomotic uh, problems. And they find out uh, that in the group, uh, in the leakage group, um, actually uh, the, the time um, um, the time of fluorescent enhancement up to the tip, up to the end of the gastric uh, tube was delayed up to around about 20 seconds. That makes uh, a significant uh, difference. But of course, all these uh, small uh, studies have their limitations. Uh, still just small uh, case numbers, and it's an important point for the future. The other aspect to, for the use of ICG uh, is to identify um, the anatomy and especially in the uh, esophageal surgery, um, the thoracic duct. Um, you find in the literature uh, uh, around about uh, 2 to 12 percent um, chylothorax uh, after uh, esophageal surgery. I, I think it's very high. We don't see that so often, but if you have this complication, it's really serious and it's uh, related with uh, pneumonia, respiratory complications, and so on. So it's important to avoid. And there is a technique. Um, you need an ultrasound and you need the ICG, and uh, if you, you need to inject the ICG into the inguinal lymph nodes or into a small bowel mesentery, and after half an hour or maybe one hour, you are able to identify the thoracic duct. And you will find a few data um, that uh, show that it's good possible. Uh, for instance, this was uh, two, uh, 20 patients, and they injected a high dose uh, bilateral inguinal of ICG and were able to identify the uh, thoracic duct in 19 patients. So very quickly, <laughs> um, let's come to an end. The uh, use of ICG is able to um, improve the patient outcome. It's an easy technique, easy to learn, and uh, maybe the only uh, negative point might be that you need to take some money and to buy the equipment. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.